Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Hey there, and welcome to today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. With me, your host is Michelle Spiva and Practical Priestess of Wisdom. I want to invite you to join me today when we're going to be talking about anchors and balloons. We want to figure out what's that stuff holding you down and what are the things you need to be looking at that lift you up. So join me as we look through the two different ways you can have anchors in your life and which and how to identify the ones that need to go. And then we'll also take a look at how to identify the balloons and how not to get duped by things that you think are balloons that lift you up, but they don't. They just tend to get you all tangled up. Oh, yes. So stick with me. It's going to be good. I'll see you on the flip. Have a good one. Hey there, and welcome to today's podcast. Let's go on and get into it. I decided to title this Anchors and Balloons because of the question of trying to figure out what holds me down and what lifts me up, especially in times like now. Now, yesterday, I talked about the... um, the way to walk on shifting sand. And when I, whenever I close my eyes to think about what it feels like right now, it feels like uh, being on roller skates. Not even, no, I'm not going to say roller skates. Being on a surfing board on the water, choppy water for the first time, first time ever, and trying to move forward or make some progress. That's what I equate this to because nothing is the same. There are, <laughs> there are so many things at work and they all are fighting for, vying for our attention, whether it be our personal needs to get out, to uh, be able to live life as normal. Y'all, I saw the, uh, it's not funny. It, it, it was one of those memes that makes you go, huh? And it's a cartoon drawing where at the top, it, uh, it just says karma. And it shows animals uh, walking down the streets of a town with uh, cameras hanging around their necks and some of them holding up cell phones. And it shows people in buildings pressed against the uh, windows, looking out, saying, oh, I would love to, you know, uh, not saying, but looking as if they would long to be out as well. They even have one where the guy is trying to get out of the bars to get out. And it it did something to me because I know it's supposed to be funny, but it really, it made me pause and look at it and try to figure out why is this hitting me viscerally? Why, why am I feeling like this with this representation? And I had to realize that in times like this, when everything is topsy-turvy, when we have no end in sight of uh, what's going to happen, all we know is that things have definitely changed and no one has an answer, it kind of gives you a sense of the gravity of what it means to exist in trying times, what it means to be in the midst of beginnings where the the chaos and the catastrophe, the death and destruction and all that stuff is still at hand. And so it's been, it's been quite different. So I'm looking at not only, you know, I need to get out of this house, you know, all of the different things that you want to say, but also um, what does life look like for me as a single female, uh, single income business person who offered 
uh, one-on-one services like I did. And the longer we go into uh, the need to uh, try to get a handle on the pandemic and the need which I totally agree with, to continue to self-distance. How do we work with these confines of our livelihood, of our health, of our mental uh, stability, of all these things? Just today, I, whew, I will say I have had to do this particular podcast and yesterday's podcast more times than I've had to do any of the others. If it's not for my sinus issues where I have to stop and sneeze, and yes, it's spring, and this happens every year. Or the little kids who, and they're not little, teenagers who love to use my backyard because I live in a cul-de-sac. I don't have a fence. Most of my neighbors don't have a fence, but there's something about my yard that there's, there's this open space, big enough, you know, where it connects to the other yards for them to play and all of that. And usually I'm okay with it. But when the ball and the body run into my house and it makes a big boom and I'm trying to record and I'm thinking something has landed. It's not cool. And, you know, so I can tell that I'm not on edge as much as I am having to work harder on dealing with irritants and irritations. And even with that, having conversations with people is tricky because you never know if you're going to say something or if they're going to say something that just rubs you the wrong way. And it, and it gets into an area where you don't want to go. And I'm at that point where I'm like, because I am thinking of what are the anchors and what are the balloons in my life? Because I need to actively participate in making sure that I adjust and adapt as quickly as possible, that I increase my reaction time to when things happen, to learn how to pivot on a point, and to trust my gut instincts along with my intellect to uh, quickly decide, and I said decide, and that's what I meant, to cut off all the other options, to move in another direction. That's where I find myself getting to the point where I am determined to find my bearings and strengthen the ones that are good for me and do away completely with the ones that are not. And I will be honest to to say that in the last few months, I have found myself um, cutting off uh, habits, people, relationships, uh, all those different things that are not healthful for me or them uh, in that they're not progressing and they have run their course. They've done what they were supposed to. They were good for the time that they were good. And when I say good and bad, I'm not talking about something that's always been good or something that's always been bad. I am talking about for the new time that we find ourselves in, what is healthful, not help for what's healthful for us to engage in, for us to do, to do win-wins for not only ourselves, but for those we interact with and to have the courage and the strength. Now, when I say cutting off, I'm not talking about where uh, I am, especially in the relationships. I'm not talking about where I am like, I'm never talking to you again or any of that kind of stuff. No, it's just being able to uh, update and uh, elevate the type of interaction we have so that, yeah, we can be cordial. Maybe we're associates right now instead of, you know, ace spoon coons where we are always talking. Well, that was never the case, but you know what I mean? Doing what's needful and helpful for both parties or all parties where we get a win-win so that we can use those energies, those necessary energies to be able to do what it takes to make it in this world, you know? And so, it's been eye-opening and illuminating and and sort of uh, uncomfortable. Yeah, very uncomfortable, I'm going to say. One time I, I, I equated to like when you uh, do a furniture change in, in a room and you were so used to where everything was that even with the lights out, you could uh, navigate the room without running into anything. But now, even with the lights out, you can tell the room is different. The way the air hangs in the darkness is different. Things that were where you're uh, subconsciously used to them being are not there anymore. You find yourself stubbing your toe or walking into something and totally feeling disoriented. And that's what it feels like right now. 
It's not that you took necessarily anything out of the room, aka your life, but it's now all rearranged and it's new and it's different and it's frustrating. And it seems like the lights are out and you can't find your bearings. And so that's one of the first things that I've been focusing on trying to do in a conscious conscious way, especially this month. Getting my act together because now it's been uh, three plus months and this is the new normal and I've been knowing that and now I'm out of the holding pattern and I'm moving into the newness, the new way things work. And because of that, everything must be evaluated for its efficacy. Everything must be evaluated for if it is right for right now or if it has served its purpose, or if it's going to be right for coming up. I feel like Marie Marie Kondo, where she's like, does this spark joy in your life? As for what parts of what I do, who I am, what I have, uh, what parts either no longer serve me or... Uh, are they they need to be retired or they they need to um be untethered where I don't lean on them so much and I'm gonna tell you it's daunting it's intimidating it's frustrating because there's a lot of crap and baggage emotionally psychically and physically that falls into this area of finding my bearings you know so let's look at anchors and then we'll look at balloons. How about that? So anchors, what is that which holds you down? And the way I look at anchors, I look at them as a twofold. On one side, you have the anchor in the traditional sense. It's the tether that keeps you anchored to something so that you don't float away or lose your bearing. So it's that anchor that keeps you grounded. It's that anchor that helps you to find your North Star to always be solid and to not get lost along the way. But then there are those other anchors that become just albatrosses around your neck where you're, you're tethered to, to something, someone, uh, something, some event, some guilt, you know, uh, uh, some expectation or whatever it is that at the time, it was okay. But now that you've changed, and especially now that the world has changed, you guessed it. It has now become one of those anchors that weighs you down in not a good way. And so it takes a lot of courage, especially for me. I don't know if it does for you, but for me, it takes a lot of courage for me to correctly assess those types of anchors. And that's where it's hard because. On some of them, I clearly know what I have to do. I got to get the, the courage up to now, you know, do what needs to be done with them because the psychic toll of continuing to carry all of that is kind of like, for me, I am the queen of having a million tabs open on many different browsers on my computer and then wonder why it starts slowing down and telling me we're running out of memory, <laughs> That's the same thing with all of these different anchors, whether you realize it or not. That uh, that person that you met at a conference 15 years ago, uh, and you keep them in your in your phone. You 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 know the contact list and all of this kind of stuff in your phone is like, look, do you want to archive these videos? I mean, these um, uh, photos and these contacts or not? And you have this guilt, like. I haven't even talked to them since that time we hung out back then. But yet and still, I'm like, why am I holding on to this kind of stuff? Only when you start to archive them and 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 start to free up your space and your uh, capacity to operate, do you start feeling like you can you can move forward. Uh, there's <laughs> there's so much that I could say about this, and I'm not going to be talking about emotional uh, baggage because that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about those vehicles that help you in what's happening on the ground, the tangibles. How do you how do you stay connected in the best way to help you um, in every area of your life, whether it be in your business or it be in your friendships, your relationships, your uh, mental health, uh, your ability to uh, create income in whatever way they decide that's going to happen or in your creative expression. 
because we are creators. I don't care who you are. We were made to create. That's why part of our uh, genetic markers are to survive, thrive, and multiply. That's why we have these drives to create because that's, that's what we are. We're creators, okay? But then when it comes time to looking at these anchors that you made in good faith, possibly, when you made them, it's hard to say goodbye, especially when they can offer so much comfort because they remind us of the uh, familiar. And I'll tell you, there's something about um, the way our our subconscious works. For the subconscious, good and bad does not equal what you think it does. Good and bad is not about morality or ethics or any of that stuff. Good and bad is kind of like a binary on, off, or zero or one where good equals known and bad equals unknown. And so when you're trying to go through and do this thing of evaluating what anchors you need to sever and which ones you can keep or up, or update or upgrade or consolidate even. When you are talking about getting rid of something that is known, that goes counter to because it comes down to a matter of survival. You see, there is uh, this condition that we have called homostasis, and it is a biological d- condition where each cell, down to the cellular level, we are programmed to maintain an equilibrium that has proven to be something that is familiar. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not necessarily good for you, it's familiar. And so the body will maintain and fight for that equilibrium. That's why it's so hard to quit smoking, or that's why sometimes it's so hard to defeat the growth of cancerous cells because they have become known to the environment. And and thus homostasis tries to keep things at that set point or losing weight, any of those things, plateaus, all of that stuff is because of the way we are made up. So what I am talking about with these anchors, this is not... Uh, light work. This is very heavy, especially when you're when you're possibly looking at doing away with things that you've known for decades, depending on how old you are, and it's now time for you to knowingly free yourself up so that you can use as much bandwidth and of your capacity to to move forward into the unknown. Yeah. I don't think so. It's kind of like, you mean to tell, this is your body, you mean to tell me that you want to get away get away from all of the good stuff t- so that you can make room for bad stuff? I know it sounds crazy, but that's really kind of what happens. And so finding your bearings and, and learning what to cut uh, and, and sticking to it, yeah, and fighting against your normal biological tendency to have an equilibrium, you know, that fancy word homostasis, it flies in the face of uh, the audacity of you to go against your nature. But yet still, it's something that we need, especially in times like now. So thank you for letting me talk about that part. The next part I want to talk about is balloons. Now, I'll tell you where I got the whole balloons thing. Um, I was uh, looking uh, at... Uh, some analogies of uh, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. And I was like, wow, especially with yesterday, I talked about uh, how to uh, walk on shifting sand. So Dorothy is whisked away from her tether, from her anchor Mm -hmm. by a tornado. The tornado comes in, sends her away from from the known, you know, makes the shifting sands, brings her to the land of Oz, where she lands, kills the witch. But then she spends this time creating new friendships, adapting, learning the new ways, and even to the point where she learns to be politically savvy by making it to the wizard and asking for a boon of being able to go back home. And he finally agrees, and she's about to get into the balloon to be lifted up to this higher way of thinking and being and to get what she wants, to get back home when it doesn't work out. Only to know that the quote-unquote good witch comes in, and this good witch is the one that has to remind her that you always had the answer. And of course, tells her to click her heels and all that stuff and say there's no place like home. but 
looking at this metaphor of these balloons, the air, and I've talked about the powers of the air, the air, if you will, is a metaphor for our thoughts, our ideas, our ability to create our ability to migrate to different levels of understanding, to grow, evolve, to become more intelligent, intuitive, instinctive, and ingenious. And so that which lifts you up is one of those balloons. And quickly identifying and reinforcing the good balloons that will lift you up, as opposed to the balloons that are beneath you now, It's the same thing. It's another clearing out process. It's another one of those processes where it makes it hard for you to do away with that which has become known. But for a lot of us, the things that used to lift us, they don't do it anymore. Think about this. What if in this time of sequestering and uh, self-distancing and isolation, let's just call it what it is. What if we have... Uh, that known thing that you know, if you're if you go and you get your favorite pint of ice cream, that's definitely going to lift you up. <laughs> but now that you've spent time at home and you've gotten over the nerves and the stress of of constantly eating, and now you found a new rhythm and a new routine, you're back to where you're like, okay, I know, good and gosh darn well that I can't just eat all day, and so. That means that now that same pint of ice cream that might have brought you joy when you were stressing out and dealing with the tumultuous tumultuous uh, uh, situation of being at home all the time, which was new, you now are like, I don't necessarily need that ice cream. I might still want it, but I don't need it because that's not what is a true balloon for me. And, and so you have to go and kind of look for them. And like I said before, I thought it was quite, quite apropos thinking about the whole Dorothy uh, thing where she didn't have to look for that tornado. It was instantaneous, sudden, destructive. Doesn't it sound like a catastrophe? Yeah, I thought so. And it transported her, whether she wanted to or not, to a new land, a new environment. And it severed the anchors that kept her at home with Auntie M and the others and her uncles. But then when it came time for her to get back home after she learned all these lessons, she had to go look for her balloons. And that's the thing about that which lifts you up. You have to put some investment in it. You have to search it out. You have to qualify it and not take it for granted. And If there's something that is low-hanging fruit where it gives you a quick visceral reward, namely food, sex, that base level stuff, it is not necessarily the balloon that is going to lift you high enough to be able to handle what's coming up. Because there's a reason that you want these balloons to lift you up. Because the higher you go, the more you're able to see uh, what's below and the better you're able to make uh, under a strategic understanding of what you want, what you need to do, and what's coming up on the horizon. And if we're only keeping those quote unquote temporary balloons that pop as soon as we get our hit, we're never making any kind of strides that will help us with the unknown. And I'm not saying that I have all the answers or that I know how to navigate what's coming up because I don't. If you remember yesterday, I talked about Nassim Tlaib and how he said that the the, uh, pandemic was a catastrophe. It wasn't the black swan. The black swan is still coming. And the the reason why it's a black swan is because we don't know what it is. We don't know how it's going to happen because it is part of the randomness of life. But it will come. The only thing we do know is that randomness inserts itself periodically in our lives. And so it's like, okay, I'm sitting here (laughs) waiting for the other shoe to drop. Nothing is the same. Everybody's running around uh, in, a, in a frenzy because we don't know what's happening. People are just trying to throw money at it. People are demanding their freedoms and liberties to do what they will. People are forcing and trying to force their way to go back to things like nothing happened. Like, let's just go back to what we knew. <laughs> and it's not working because everything is in flux. 
Everything is creating frictions and rubbing against each other. And it is now more than ever time for us individually. Now, if you are responsible for children or for elderly uh, relatives or or parents, I totally understand. God bless you because you got even more on your plate. And in this time, it is time for us to realize that the buck really stops with us as adults. It really stops with us doing the work that is needed, the work that wisdom wants us to have so that we can elevate not only our minds and our, our wisdom, but our, our, our physicality, our uh, ability to live in this, this new uh, world, whatever comes. And as I said before yesterday, with uh, catastrophes, when you look at them from that 30,000 foot view, they always seem to come to get you prepared for the new stuff that if they had not come, you wouldn't be able to survive the newness. Because what do they do? They, they teach us to up our level on our ability to survive and thrive. They teach us to change our viewpoints. They teach us to have a faster reactionary time. They teach us to trust our gut and couple that with our intellect. They teach us um, to increase our ability to adapt. Oh, yes, there's so much that they continue to do. And so the wink, wink that I'm getting, the wisdom smack that I'm getting from wisdom is be thankful for the calamities and the for the um, uh, the the catastrophes that have come because if you get their lessons if you if you get their wisdoms you'll be able to elevate yourself while being tethered to the right grounding so that you don't lose yourself in the new world the new economy the new society or whatever it is that you call the newness that we face in today's world you'll be able to navigate and you'll be able to even for a lot of people become a lead for people for such a time as this Because there are some people that are never going to be able to get to this point. But for those like you who listen to these and do your work of strengthening your wisdom daily, this is the time that you have been planning and and training for so that you can be able to know your anchors, clean them up, keep the ones that help you and cut the ones that don't, even though it'll be hard. And then searching for your your balloons that are going to get you high enough in your frequency, high enough in your health, high enough in your mental capacity to stay healthy and to not succumb to the ravages of isolation without uh, protection for your mind. Because it needs to be taken care of just like your body, just like all of your other needs, Your, your mental health needs to be taken care of as well. And so with that, this is part of finding your bearings and learning how to take care of yourself in this new world, because this new world is one that is shaky. We don't know it yet. No one has ever been here before. And so we have to be adventurous, courageous, and we have to be willing to go out there and do it. And the best way I can think of right now is to at least, at minimum, understand what catastrophes bring forth in us, meaning your uh, increased adaptability, your increased reaction time, your uh, increased ability to change your viewpoints, your thoughts and your behaviors, and then choosing the right anchors that keep you tethered to the right things and choosing the balloons that get you high enough and lift it up enough so that you get above the fray of the things that would wear you down. Get above the treachery of the powers of the air. Get above that stuff that that trips us up and tricks us when we try uh, to do something uh, not knowing or realizing all of the traps that are the low-hanging fruits that get you tangled up in the trees, if you will. Understanding that you got to work for that stuff that lifts you up. What, and I'll, I'll ask you with a few minutes I have left, when thinking about what lifts you up, what are the balloons in your life? Think about what are those things that help you to naturally create the good hormones in your mind that get you to a happy state, that get you to a state of clarity, that get you to a state of harmony between the back of your brain, 
That's that fight or flight um, primitive brain that negotiates with the middle part of your brain, which is that emotional part, that part that feels and hurts and, and gets fearful and scared, along with that front part of your brain to help it get clear and not so cloudy so that it can work with all the other parts of the brain to come up with a workable solution, a plan, if you will, to navigate your days so that you can make progress and you can be better than you were before. Because time is out now. You know, we've had enough time to get acclimated, to realize that, hey, stuff is not going back the way it is. And time is out for us to be waiting in, in, in the corner, waiting for powers that be above us to tell us how we're going to make it. They don't know either. And it's not in any, in, in any indictment. This is not a criticism. This is just, they're human just like us. And we would do better to make sure that if nothing else, we know what we know that is going to help us to live in this new world, especially with wisdom. Wisdom does not cause other people to suffer for your decisions. And so with wisdom working on us, we find these win-wins that elevate all of us, that help us all to rise, all, you know, the tides rising all boats, raising all boats. And so I just want you to be aware of the anchors and the balloons that are opportunities in your life. It's time to clean house. It's time to sever those things that would weigh you down that no longer help or support you. And it's time for you to identify those things that lift you up. So, yep, my time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with another podcast of Wisdom Smack. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, Uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.